All right, let's take a look at a photo workflow from start to finish. You know, what would I do to a photo that I was going to keep from start to finish, all the way from the raw processing all the way through to finishing in Photoshop? A couple things before we get started. First off, I'm using Adobe Camera Raw here. Feel free to substitute Lightroom. I use Lightroom, full disclosure, I use Lightroom 99% of the time. Uh, that said, everything I do here can be done inside the develop module, same exact settings, same exact name, same exact effect, and you can do the same thing inside Lightroom. That said, I'd want to do it here inside of Camera Raw just because I don't want to assume everybody has a Lightroom and I know everybody here has Photoshop. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to be moving kind of quickly through some of these things. So I don't want to say it's an advanced tutorial, but it's more of a thought process. You know, what am I doing? What order am I doing things? And what am I thinking as I go along? I'm not necessarily going to explain what every setting does. All right, so that said, let's jump in. First off, we got the file open here. I'll even go to uh, the basic tab and go to reset camera raw default. Just so you know, this is right out of the camera. First thing I would do here is tackle white balance. And I'm going to go with the already kind of warmer colors that this has. And I'm just going to make them a little bit warmer here. Okay, so I'm just going to drag that temperature slider over. So that's the very first step, white balance. Why is it the first step? Because it's on top. No, um, it works that way, but what's nice about it is, is you do work from the top down here, but that's just generally known as the first thing that you should do. Let's get the color right in the photo. The next thing I do here is I'll grab my crop tool and I'll crop the photo. I just really want to get that top area out, and I think that will do it pretty well here. And I crop the photo at this point because I'm now going to go down to all these settings down here, my exposure and my tonal settings, and I figure, you know, I'm going to start looking at my histogram at this point and why would I keep an area inside the photo that would affect the histogram? Why would I keep it there when eventually I'm going to crop it out anyway? So I, I go ahead and crop early. Now we'll move to exposure. If I look at the histogram, it tells me I could take exposure this far. I really don't want to do that. I kind of like the darker effect here of kind of almost silhouetting uh, the boats and everything in the background. So I'm going to leave it pretty low. I'm not going to bring it quite as high as I could. And then I might always come back here. There's nothing that says you can't come back and start to tweak your sliders at all. Recovery, we don't really have any highlights to recover. Fill light, well, if I start to bring that up, I'll start to bring some of the trees in the back out of shadows. I kind of want that. I want to silhouette them as well, so I want to keep them dark. I'm going to make them darker by increasing this blacks slider here. Okay, moving on down the line, I skip brightness and contrast just because I can do those things better with clarity and the other settings inside here. And I, I would normally bump up the clarity here. You won't really see it much because there's not a whole lot of detail here. But normally I'd bump up that clarity here. And then vibrance, I can come in here. And what I usually do, and I know a lot of you do this as well, is I'll take that setting and I'll crank it way up to the extreme just to take a look at what it looks like. And then I always pull it back. Okay, and I find that gives me a good way to kind of you know see what it looks like without anything and then see what it looks like with way too much. And again, I'll always just pull that back a little bit here. Right to about there, I think. Next thing I do is I'll go over to my tone curve here. I'm going to click on point and I'll take a look and see what it looks like with strong contrast. And, you know, that looks pretty cool. But at the same time, I'll always just jump back here, take a look at medium. And, you know, I kind of like strong for this one. So I'm going to stick with the strong contrast. Now, we could go down to the other tabs. Frankly, there's really not anything else I want to do here inside of Camera Raw, so I'm pretty much going to stop, and now would come my move over into Photoshop. So I'll just hit Open Image, and it's going to go ahead and render and open up the file in Photoshop. Now, if you were using Lightroom, what you would do is you go up to the Photo menu, and you just click Edit Inside Photoshop CS2 or CS3, whichever one. So if you're using Lightroom, that would be the point where you'll go in and move over into Photoshop. Now, let's go into Photoshop, and what's the first thing that we're going to do here? Well, I'm going to follow along the workflow that I used in Camera Raw, and I'm going to start off with color. So any selective color changes here. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go to Hue Saturation, and I'm going to take up my reds. I'm going to bump up that saturation here. I'm going to do the same thing for yellows. Okay? And the background is just to me the background's getting too much okay that's before and that's after and that that's just too much for me but what I do like is the water I like to bring out some of that color in the water so what I'll do is leave that adjustment layer on all right 
I'm going to go take my brush tool, set the default foreground color to black, use 100% opacity here. I'm just going to paint with black on this mask, and I'm going to bring out the sky that was underneath, the original sky. Okay? And now what do I have? Well, I have a hue saturation layer that's just affecting the water now. Okay, so now I can just affect the water. And I would come in here and I'd drop the opacity down uh, considerably just, just to give a little bit more color to that water. Next thing I would do is selective exposure, selective toning. So create a brand new layer here. And this is kind of equivalent to dodging and burning. So I'm going to go to edit fill here and do 50% gray and then change that blend mode to overlay. Okay, and now to simulate dodging and burning, all I'm going to do is paint with a black or a white brush on here, and that's going to simulate dodging and burning for me. So the very first thing I do is I want to go in here, and I want to dodge this boat. I want to make the boat brighter. Okay, so I'm going to paint over this boat here, and you can always use the left and the right bracket keys to make your brush larger or smaller. Okay, so I'm kind of I'm trying to draw some attention to the boat here I'm not going to do it to this one you'll see why in a moment but take a look before and after all right and the other thing and now I'm going to flip my foreground color to black I'm going to drop my opacity down here okay and I'm going to just whoop, I'm going to kind of just burn in these trees here I like the dark trees back here and I'm going to kind of go with it and take them a little bit further okay just paint in some of those trees back there. As I look at it, you can give a try. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to drop my opacity down to this uh, hue saturation layer more. I think it was a little bit too bright. There we go. And I'm going to go back to my dodge and burn layer here. And you can give it a try at a very low opacity. I might come in here and try the water just to see what it looks like, just to see if I like it. Take a look before and after you decide for yourself. I kind of like it. So let's see what our, our, our original looks like. This is with no dodging and burning. And now we have our dodge and burn layer turned on. And I kind of like that. It's a good way to just draw attention, especially to the boat here. Next thing that we're going to do is retouching. So let's create a blank layer. Take my clone stamp tool here and watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make sure you turn on sample all layers. Uh, make sure you take the clone stamp tool. I'm going to make sure I turn on sample all layers up here. And I'm going to zoom in down here. And what I'm going to do is sample from right over here. And then I'm just going to bring my cursor over and I'm going to paint that boat away. Because I kind of liked it with just one boat. For some reason, for, for me personally, I just like this image with one boat. But what's nice about not being perfect with the clone stamp tool is we did all the work on a separate layer. So now I can take my move tool and now I can just kind of move that down a little bit. And if you need to, you can go into free transform and you can even just rotate it just a little bit. Okay. And kind of get it into place there. So it looks a little bit more realistic. All right. And that's the advantage of doing that work on a separate layer. So that's with the boat and that's without the boat. A couple other things here. Let's do some spot removal. And this you could do inside of your raw processor for me. Uh, in this example, I just find it easier to do here inside Photoshop. But what I do is I take my spot healing brush. Again, make sure all sam sample all layers is turned on and I made a blank layer. And I just click on some spots here. All right, you see I'm just clicking on them and they're going away. And this over here, this is a bird. But you, you either got to decide, you know, what we're doing here is we're removing distractions. So you either decide for yourself, are you going to accentuate the bird? so people really know it's a bird or do I just get rid of it because at this point I really think it's just gonna take away and kinda of distract people wondering what that little spot is over there so I just got rid of it so now we just have a nice clear sky and we have our layer here that has got all our spots on it so that's without spot removal and that's that spot removal layer turned on okay almost done here the next thing I would do here is try to cap things off with some sharpening so let's create a flattened copy of everything here. And instead of flattening it, I'm going to do Command Option Shift E on the Mac. And that's Control Alt Shift E on the PC. 
okay and that creates a merged copy of all the layers below but it leaves all the layers below intact so if I ever need them I have them to go back to okay now let's just go to filter filter there we go <laughs> filter sharpen I'm gonna go to unsharp mask here and I'm really I'm mainly gonna keep an eye on the boat okay I'm just gonna do my sharpening until I bring out some detail on that boat and I kinda like that that's before and that's after so we'll use those settings here so now we've done some sharpening on the boat if I were to finish this off in any way one little finishing touch is I might go filter distort go to lens correction here okay I'm gonna turn off the grid I'm just gonna add a little bit of edge darkening not too much just a little bit of edge darkening bring that midpoint in here and we can preview it with out and with the edge darkening so it's real subtle and it's supposed to be very subtle you don't want it to be apparent that you've darkened the edges but a nice little edge darkening works great because it helps focus in on the subject in the photo which is more toward the center here okay so let's take a look at our final photo and there we go and that's basically everything that I do to a photo that's a photo that I would keep and that's everything that I would do to it from start to finish from raw processing all the way into Photoshop but where you really got to kind of see this here is I saved a copy uh, before I recorded this video I kind of just opened up a copy of the original okay so now let's take a look at this in comparison to the original photo so this one over here on the right that's what we started with and over on the left is what we ended up with and it might have taken you know 10 or 11 minutes here inside the video that's because I'm explaining everything but really if you're not explaining this to somebody you can do these things in you know two three four minutes very very easily very very quickly and you can get some really good results from it from just going through a basic workflow follow the same thing from the top down inside camera raw and then I do essentially the same thing in Photoshop but I just do it more selectively everything I do I always have that mask and the ability to be selective about it inside Photoshop. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll uh, be doing more videos like this in the future. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.